One of the basic concepts behind printmaking is to create a consistent edition of prints, as opposed to a painting where each one is unique. In screen printing, we use a variety of techniques to create a stencil on a screen, then push ink through the mesh, printing colors one at a time in order to make multiples of the same image. You can use your own art to create fun, functional things, expressing your unique perspective while also having a consistent result. First, we'll need to create a stencil. This can be done a couple of ways. If you're doing this at home, you can create a traditional stencil cut from paper. Just be sure to use something sturdy, not too thick. Thin paper will fall apart when it gets wet, and cardstock is too thick and will allow the ink to get between the paper and the screen and muddy up your design. I'd suggest using freezer paper or the adhesive paper used to line cabinets. We use a photo emulsion method, which is the most accurate way to reproduce your image exactly the way you created it and is common in the screen printing industry. With practice, this can also be done at home. First, a transparency is created using your custom artwork, then light sensitive emulsion is coated onto a screen, dried in the dark, and then exposed to a light. Once exposed, the unexposed emulsion is washed away, leaving behind the stencil. We then use a squeegee to push ink through the stencil onto our finished piece. Screen printing is really versatile because, as we like to say, if it's flat and doesn't move, you can print on it. It's widely used for posters and t-shirts, but you can also print on wood, even metal. As you can imagine, we screen at just about everything we can inside our studio, including most of our signage. So whatever you're using, just be sure you use the right ink for the material, and be mindful that any texture or uneven surface will be tricky to do. I tend to do most of the poster printing, where Nikki focuses on fabric. I think it has to do with the length of our arms. They each have their own considerations at each stage of the process, so we'll talk about this as we go along using two of our recent designs, our resident robot mascot and a colorful sugar skull. 